If you look at the news in the 1960s, you'll see that John F. Kennedy, the president of the US, has a famous speech in the year 1962. In this speech he says, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they're easy, but because they're hard. This speech pretty much changed the Cold War. Because not only were they having problems with each other, they started a new race and it's something called the space race. After this, NASA put it in fifth gear and started working on this project. And this is when the Apollo program began. From 1968 to 1972, America sent nine rockets to the moon and it's known as the Apollo. Apollo 8 to Apollo 17. Everybody knows Apollo 11. It's the first spaceship that lands on the moon and from the three people in there, two of them get out and walk on the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. There is a lot of conspiracy theories about the moon landing and lately it has gone up. They didn't go to the moon, everything is a lie, the earth is flat, you can't escape the atmosphere, it's made of glass. A lot of things that people find funny. If the Apollo program didn't go to the moon and actually land on it, the first people that would create this conspiracy would be the Soviets, the biggest enemy of the US. If something like this didn't take place, the Soviets would be the first to say it. But the funny thing is, the Russians congratulated the American for the moon landing. A lot of people say that the main scientists that worked on this program were the Nazi scientists. But a lot of others say that the Soviets had the same scientists, but they couldn't figure it out. Either way, the most famous rocket scientist that helped the Apollo program was Werner von Braun, a rocket scientist that worked for Nazi Germany. It has been said that Werner von Braun was the leader of a rocket factory in Nazi Germany and he ran it in a way that no one would dare to work slow. Why? Because if someone worked too slow, they would be hung in the front door of the rocket factory and it would be hung there so the other workers would see it. When he was working for NASA, nobody knew who he was. But years after Werner von Braun had died, about 50 years after World War II, the documents were leaked. They say if they found out when he was alive what he had done in Nazi Germany, Werner von Braun would be charged with crimes against humanity. But as you know, Werner von Braun was very good at what he did, especially in rockets. And when you have this much knowledge, you're very useful, especially when you're at a war with a huge, super powerful nation. But our video is not about Werner von Braun. It's about going to the moon. Either way, in the year 1972, the Apollo program had ended. And to this day, about 50 years later, we have not gone back to the moon. But another program has begun, and that's the Artemis program. Artemis is not like Apollo where they want to go and come back. They want to create a hub around the moon, and that allows them to study space, especially living in space. And they want to use the knowledge to go to Mars. If they want to go to Mars, why do they want to go to the moon first? Because Mars is extremely far. If you see in our video that what is going on on Mars, you'll see how far it is. And that is why they want to start studying on the moon before they go all the way to Mars. Elon Musk also wants to go to Mars with SpaceX, but this program is completely different. Artemis is the name of a Greek goddess, and you can't mistake it for Artemisia. Artemisia was a Greek woman that helped Xerxes, king of Persia. But let's get back to the Artemis program. Unlike Apollo, where only three people go to the moon, Artemis is set up in a way where four astronauts go to the moon. This is the rocket that will be launched to the moon.
This is the SLS rocket and it's made for the Artemis program. This is bigger than the Saturn V rocket and we could say that the SLS is the biggest and strongest rocket ever made. When this thing launches, there is no going back. It's like a skydiver that has jumped out of the plane. You will either go to the moon or be destroyed. Eight minutes after launch, the boosters fall off the rocket and this is when they have exited the atmosphere. When it exits the atmosphere, it does one lap around Earth and launches towards the moon. When it goes around the Earth, it's getting help from the gravity to speed up the spaceship. After using the gravity and the final rocket, it has reached the maximum speed and in the end, it will let go of the final rocket. It's good to know that they will stay there for about a month. Where? Inside the spaceship? No, the moon has to be pre-staged before the astronauts go there, so it's ready for them to start working. If you know the Apollos, Apollo 8 went to the moon without anyone. Apollo took three astronauts to space so they can do a spacewalk. Apollo 10 went to the moon, but they didn't do the moon landing and came back. And finally, Apollo 11 is the one that actually landed on the moon. But Artemis is different. They first have to create a space station around the moon. This space station will be called the Gateway and it's just like the ISS but instead of around the Earth, it's around the Moon. Apollo went to the Moon and landed there but when Artemis arrives to the Moon, it connects itself to the Gateway and from the Gateway, it slowly lands on the Moon. For going back, they use the same method. They lift off from the Moon, connect to the Gateway and after that, they will launch towards the Earth. Just like the way they use the gravity of the Earth to launch themselves towards the Moon, they use the Moon for the opposite. And after a few days, they have arrived towards Earth. The spacecraft removes itself from the bottom, spins around, and enters the atmosphere bottom first. Right now, the spacecraft would have a speed of 1600 kilometers an hour. The friction that basically destroys asteroids that enter the atmospheres tries to burn up this spaceship. But this was made in a way and certain metals were used that it doesn't allow it to burn up and it handles the heat. And when it enters the atmosphere, it slowly comes down with three parachutes and lands in the Pacific Ocean. Since the Artemis program wants to take humans on Earth, it has to be very well made because they don't want to destroy their astronauts. And that is why on the 16th of November, 2022, Artemis 1 was sent to space, but this time without anyone in it because this was for experiments. On November 21st, 2022, Artemis 1 arrives at the moon. It doesn't have plan to land on the moon. It's supposed to rotate around the moon and study it and then come back to Earth. Artemis 2 is supposed to take astronauts, but like Apollo 10, it's not going to actually land on the moon. Stay around the moon for about a month and then come back. But Artemis 3 is like Apollo 11. It's supposed to take astronauts and actually do a moon landing. And NASA says we need a few years before we do that. And it has been planned that NASA will do a moon landing with Artemis 3 in the year 2025. 